Hi, today we're going to take a look at the new Tamron 150 to 500mm lens. So, let's see what it can do. Today we will be taking a look at the most recent telephoto zoom lens by Tamron and one in several lenses of this category that we will be reviewing in the near future. We had this lens for a number of months now and using it on both our A7R Mark IV and our new Sony A1 and we shall share our experience with both cameras. As we usually do, we shall start with the design and build of the lens before we move over to the performance and give you our final verdict. The lens has a very complex design including no less than 25 elements in 16 groups with a whopping 5 low depression elements, 1 extra low depression element and 2 hybrid spherical elements. The lens also includes the BBAR G2 or Broadband Anti Reflection Generation 2 coating for reduced ghosting and flare. It also has fluorine coating in the front to make cleaning the lens easier. The lens is very well built with what seems to us like mostly metal design with a few areas of plastic and of course rubber. While not being extremely long lens for its focal length when closed down at just under 22 cm, it does extend considerably to about 29 cm when fully extended and the hood will add you another 6.5 cm. Weight is a different story and this lens, like almost all other 500mm plus zoom lenses, is pretty heavy, tipping the scale at just under 2kg with a collar, hood and a front cap. The lens has two rings, a thin ring for the aperture and a much thicker ring in the front for the zoom. The thin aperture ring is fairly sensitive and positioned well to easily work with one finger and it has only a slight forward and backwards movement unlike a number of inexpensive telephone lenses we used in the past. The large zoom ring has a pretty decent friction to it and it turns to the right. Going from 150 to 500 mm requires about 90 degrees of turn. On our unit there was no zoom creep. By pulling the zoom ring, you can also lock it at any focal length, which is an interesting addition, although it can be a bit confusing in some situations. On the left, the lens has four switches. Focus limiter, autofocus manual focus switch, image stabilization on off and a switch for its different modes. On the right, you have a lock that prevents the lens from opening during travel. The focus limiter has three modes full, 3 meters to infinity and 15 meters to infinity. The autofocus and vibration compensation or VC both have on off modes and the VC switch has three modes. Mode 1 is for normal stabilization, mode 2 is for panning and mode 3 is stabilization for easier framing. From our brief testing, mode 3 does seem to help a little with framing when shooting moving subject through the viewfinder. The lens is fully weather sealed with rubber at the lens mount and special weather sealing inside the lens. The lens only comes in an E-mount and works well with both full frame and APS-C Sony bodies where it has an equivalent focal range of 225 to 750 mm on a 35 mm sensor. The lens comes with a 6.5 cm deep plastic hood with grooves inside. The hood is reversible but only for storage as the hood covers most of the zoom ring in this way. The front of the hood, just like the front of the lens, is rubberized. The Tamron has a rounded 7 blade diaphragm and just in case you were wondering, here is the different aperture values at different focal lengths of this lens. The lens has a large 82mm front filter thread. As we have noted, Tamron made the front part of the lens with some rubber coating with the front element a little bit recessed to prevent scratches to the glass and to allow placing the lens vertically on a table even without the cap. The lens comes included with a detachable heavy duty metal collar which has an Arca style base with a quarter inch 20 thread in the center and two small threads on the sides. It also has a metal strap attachment holes which are a nice touch. 
Despite all of these, the color is the one design aspect of the lens that we don't really care for. And that is based on our use of the lens over the past few weeks, mostly hand holding it. First, the color is too short if you want to carry the lens by holding it, which we often did. This is true even with our fairly small hands. Even worse, it is too close to the lens, so our fingers barely fit and larger hands will not fit at all. The biggest design flaw in our view has to do with the locking knob. It is placed in the worst possible location, which if you carry the lens with your left hand will just keep cutting into it. We would like to see Tamron or maybe a third party manufacturer come up with a longer, lower Arca lens with a different locking mechanism. This will improve the usability of the lens considerably in our opinion. Before we move over to performance, don't forget to subscribe. When it comes to autofocus, the lens uses Tamron's VXD or Voice Call Extreme Torque Drive, which is a fancy name for the company's linear motor focus mechanism used in this lens and the company's 70 to 180 mm lens. In action, this motor proved to be silent and when attached to our new Sony A1, also very fast. As for accuracy, we did get a few misses here and there, and there certainly is some room for improvement in future firmware updates. Turning the image stabilization on has a visible effect on the image as viewed by the user, especially in mode 3 which tries to mimic using the lens on a tripod. Other reviewers claim between 2 and 3 stops of stabilization with this lens, we can't really be sure but it sounds about right. As we normally do, we tested the sharpness of the lens using a special large professional Imatest high-end chart. Testing sharpness with our chart with this type of lens is very complex and even our studio, which is over 17 meters long, is not long enough for a full chart test at 500 millimeters. Looking at the results that we got, at 150 millimeters wide open at f5, sharpness in the center is good. For maximum sharpness, however, you need to be somewhere between f8 and f11. Corner sharpness is surprisingly good even wide open and you see very little improvement closing down. At around 300mm wide open at f5.6, sharpness in the center is already very good. For maximum sharpness you might need to be around f8. Corner sharpness is also very good wide open with a little improvement closing down. At 500mm wide open at f6.7, sharpness is very good in the center with very little to gain at f8. We could not get the very edges of the chart at this long focal length in our studio, but the edges that we did get seems okay, wide open and best at around f11 or so. The Tamron is a very interesting lens when it comes to close-up performance. We tested it with manual focus and got the following results. Please keep in mind that the official minimum focus is 60 cm only at 150 mm. Fill curvature is very high at 150 mm and still very much visible wide open at 500 mm, so the center of the frame might be very sharp but the corners will look completely blurred. This can actually result in a nice effect if you're shooting a butterfly for example, but it is not always something that you might want, so keep this in mind. Final note on this topic, the official maximum macro magnification of the lens is 1 to 3.1, which is pretty impressive for this type of lens. Next, we tested breathing and the lens seems to exhibit very low levels of breathing in our test, which is good news for any video shooters. We were very impressed with the chromatic aberration performance of the lens both at 150mm and at 500mm in the center and at the edges and we saw no visible longitudinal chromatic aberrations in our tests. When it comes to flare, at 150mm with the hood you can certainly see some flare but at 500mm it is fairly well controlled and you need to be aiming right at the light source to get flare in your frame. At 150mm you get a ton of darkening in the corners wide open with the camera correction turned off, slowing down to f8 seems to remove almost any trace of vignette. There is far less vignette at 500mm at f6.7 but if you want it gone completely you will need to go down to about f10 or f11. Looking at our test results, we could not see any significant barrel or pincushion distortion at any of the focal lengths with the lens. 
When it comes to Boca, things are a bit more complicated with this lens. You of course get a ton of pretty smooth background separation, especially at 500mm as you would expect, but the Boca balls are mostly oval even close to the center of the frame pretty much up to f10. On the bright side, there are no real onion rings. We shot several thousand images with this lens on both our Sony a7R Mark IV and our new Sony A1 and you can see a few examples on the screen right now. So let's sum things up. Tamron has done a great job with this lens providing a very welcome long telephoto zoom alternative to Sony's own glass just between the 100 to 400 mm and the 200 to 600 mm variants at almost half the price. Although, from our personal perspective, as avid bird shooters, we would much rather have a smaller, lighter 500mm f5.6 prime, similar to the Nikon PF lens, it seems that at the moment all manufacturers focus on long zoom lenses, which seems to keep them mostly large or extendable and way too heavy for our taste. Personal preferences aside, this lens is well built, has a solid set of features and controls, we especially like the ability to lock the lens at any focal length and mode 3 of the stabilizers seems to show promise. When it comes to optics, the lens really surprised us with solid performance at all focal lengths, even wide open, reaching peak performance at around f8 or f11. On the negative side, beside the fairly considerable, although far from uncommon weight and occasional misfocus, we really think that the color requires a complete redesign, especially if you have any plans on carrying the lens in your hand for any period of time. Also worth noting is that if you were considering this lens for use with teleconverters, don't. As far as we can tell, only Sony native lenses support teleconverters at this point. Also worth noting is that with our Sony A1 we were limited to about 15 frames per second of continuous shooting with the lens while with some native Sony glass we can go all the way up to 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter. Finally pricing. Tamron has positioned the lens very competitively against the two existing Sony options and it is currently priced at $1400. We'll be waiting to see what sort of answer Sigma will bring to the table very soon. So that was our look at the Tamron 150 to 500 mm lens. You can check out the full review with all of our test results on lensvid.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to find more videos just like this. See you next time.